Hey everybody, how's it going? Courier from ThemeCo with a quick video on looper provider types. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you've already seen our looper introduction video. And if you haven't already, definitely check that out first as we're gonna be diving just a little bit deeper here with some of the concepts surrounding loopers. So from that previous video, you'll remember that we talked about how loopers can essentially be applied to any element in your build and loopers are broken down into two different pieces. There is the looper provider component, which is where we set up the data that we wanna work with. And then there's the looper consumer component where we start outputting that data and formatting it with the elements that you already know from your typical page building experience. Now on that looper provider side of things, there are actually five different types as of this release cycle that you can use to access data in your install and then work with later with a consumer. If you've played around with any of our new post elements that came out in this release, you will probably know from clicking around a little bit that all of these are powered by using a provider set to the recent post type. Now we have this set aside as a specific type because for the most part, we know that a lot of people are probably gonna simply wanna pull through their most recent posts most commonly more than any other post type or certain situation they're working with. So when your provider is set to this type, we kind of do all the heavy lifting for you. There's really nothing for you to think about other than how many items you would like to output in that list. And so you'll see right now I've got four, but I could update that to two if I wanted. And this is really important. You wanna make sure that you've set the exact number you wanna work with here, because that will specify how big the WordPress query is that you're working with. So just trying to keep that as small as possible is always better for performance. Now, if you wanna get into any type of filtering with how you're accessing these posts or maybe a particular post type or perhaps a post type that belongs to a certain taxonomy, that is where you will want to start digging in to the query builder. So this is the second selection in our type list here. It's right after recent posts and it really opens up a whole world of possibilities for you to work with. This is where you can specify the post type that you wanna access. So behind the scenes, when you have it set to recent posts, it is just set to post by default, but we could access multiple post types, say post and pages together, or perhaps a custom post type that you're working with. Additionally, we can do some cool stuff like accessing specific posts or pages or elements from a custom post type. So maybe you have a shop and you wanna pull through just a couple specific examples that you wanna feature in a spot on your site. This would be a great spot to do that. And conversely, you can exclude those posts from the main query up here if you need to. More commonly, you'll probably do things like filter by taxonomy. So for example, say that you've got a homepage and maybe you've got your post tagged with different groups like travel or food, and you wanna break those up into multiple sections on your homepage. You could do that by coming to taxonomies like I've done here and pull in a specific term. So in this case, I'm pulling through my travel tag and I'm just saying any post that is included in this travel tag, add it to the list over here. And you'll see that I've only got three posts in my install belonging to that travel tag group in the back end of my site. Conversely, we could say, give me any post that does not belong to the travel tag. And you'll see that we've got five post outputting here because on my provider, my count is set to five. And then I'm just grabbing any post that does not have that tag associated with it. So this query builder is very helpful. We can keep going down the list here. You'll see things like author. So if you want a post or post type that is only set up by a certain author, you can do that here. We can also filter by a date range. So you'll see that I've got one post back in January here and two in August. So let's say I just wanted those posts in August. I could say, give me all of my posts published after August 1st, and you'll see that list go down to two. You could also give it a range if you wanted. So if you just wanted very specifically all of your posts from August of 2020, we could select August 31st here, and now only the posts that are happening within this range will be output to that list. Finally, we've got our order by control, which is essentially 
where we select the ascending or descending order that we want to use, as well as what field are we going to order these by? Do we want to do date or perhaps we want to use the title or slug or anything else from that item and we can specify how that should be ordered over here in our output. So lots of really cool stuff to do with the query builder. Now, one slight variation of this is our query string type, which is essentially the exact same as the query builder, but it kind of gives you more low level access to working with your query. So if you're more of an under the hood type of person, or you're very familiar with WordPress, this might appeal to you in some different ways. The query builder, of course, gives you kind of a guided interface to work through. And this is a little more open-ended and abstract. So you will need to, of course, know the WordPress query syntax and what you're trying to access. But it can be a really nice one input way to quickly copy and paste queries and move stuff around if that suits your needs a little bit more. So you'll see here, kind of like my previous example, I'm only pulling through my posts that have a category of travel, but then I'm randomly ordering them here so that they show up in a different order every time they render. Now you can of course do that up here by jumping over to our order by control and we can order them randomly. But the query builder here is really meant to expose the most used parts of the WP query class. Whereas this query string type effectively allows you to access anything within that class if you are a power user and just really wanna dig deep on that. So the next provider type I wanna talk about is the current post terms provider type. So this is something you will typically use in a nested fashion while you're already in another item you're working on. So for example, uh, this is our Postmodern Pixels archive layout that's available on Design Cloud that came out with this release. And you'll see at the top here, I've got this hero post that kind of features the very first post in the list that I'm working on. Within that post, I knew that I wanted to output a tag list if any tags were available on that post. And you can see those right down here. So if I hop over here and click on my tags div and go up to customize, you'll see that my provider type is set to current post terms. And then the taxonomy I'm using is my tags from my posts. So this is where you would say, hey, I wanna use categories or if you're on your shop, maybe product categories or tags, things like that. And then next, I have my tag here, which is just a button. And I've turned on the consumer on that button to consume all the tags. So it's just saying, output all the tags applied to this post. And you'll see that for that button, when I inspect it, its link is set up using the term URL, which we can access just by going here, type in URL and I'll go down my list so I've got my term permalink there. And that just means that when I click on this button, it would take me off to the archive page for that tag and show me all of the posts belonging to that tag. And then next for the primary text here, I'm just pulling through the title. So this is very much the same thing as pulling through the title tag for your post or your page that you're working on. You're just doing it specifically for the type of terms that you're working on within that element. Now finally, and this is probably my favorite kind of, I won't call it a hidden feature, but um, I think it's something that once people really start seeing the power of, I think it'll get used a lot in your builds. But we have a specific type here for JSON. Now, if you're not familiar with JSON, it's basically just a markup language where you can structure data to be consumed in any particular way by any sort of script. It's based on JavaScript, so if you're familiar with that kind of array object syntax, it won't be foreign to you at all. But the really cool thing here is that we can set up our own custom list of data and then loop through that list and output that information in a formatted way. Now where I think this is most powerful is for situations like this. I've got kind of a faux discography here for an artist, let's say I'm working on an artist website, and let's say they've got a bunch of albums that they've released. Well, there's gonna be consistent information you would wanna output for that. Maybe 
the album image, the album title, a short description, perhaps a link off to buy that album or the year it was released. I mean, I just kind of made this up, but there could be dozens more data points that you want to use for each of these items. You can see from my list here that I've got four different items. So each of these little curly braces encapsulates one item in my list. And again, if this syntax is foreign to you, don't worry, you can follow the examples on our documentation online. But you do really wanna watch out for the structure of your syntax. JSON's a little finicky with how it's formatted. We need to quote everything here and then make sure that the final item in your list isn't followed by a comma. But other than that, it's fairly straightforward. And what I really like about this is I kind of view this as a very lightweight alternative to custom post types. For example, in the past, if I was working on somebody's website and they had a big list of information like this they needed to output, I would have probably gone and set up a custom post type and had to register all those fields and keys and pull all that data through and just manage it in my install. And it's a lot of work, but with this, we can do a very lightweight version of that just by setting up our JSON object here. We can label these things however we want. I've just done some simple labels for my link, image, title, and then we can access that in our looper. So I love this feature for things specifically like this, kind of lightweight little situations where you might have otherwise needed a custom post type, but now you can get away with doing it all natively in the tool and if you need to make an update later, you don't need to click on each item and find that piece of information and style it and tweak it. You can just jump back to your list and edit everything all at once. So for example, you'll see that I've got my title here for this fake album. If I wanted to update that, I just tweak my list and you'll see over in the live preview that it comes back just how we need it. Now the way that we access these items within this list is a little bit of a custom setup because how you set up your list and these keys will be different from how somebody else uses them. So for example, let's take this title here. I've got my list and this title output, I've just given it a key of title. So if I close, actually I'll just leave this up so you can see it. But if I inspect on my album over here and you'll see that this is just a headline element that we've got kind of everything baked into it. If I jump down to my title, sorry, it's up here. You'll see if I click in here, we've got DC looper field key is title. Now again, you don't need to remember any of this syntax. We can simply click on our dynamic content element here. I'm gonna search for looper. And there's some other cool stuff we can do here, but I'm gonna click on field, but instead of doing this directly, I can click this little cog and then specify the key that I wanna use. So I know I wanna access my title, and then we click our plus button, that adds it to our input, and now you'll see that we're accessing our title there. And since these are all different items, we can mix and match how this is used. So for example, in my subheadline here, I've got my description and then a little dash followed by the year, so I've got two bits of data being output in the same input. There's just a lot of really cool stuff that we can do with this JSON provider type.